All right, welcome to today's Brighton.com interview. I'm Mike Adams, the founder of Brighton.com. And we are joined today by one of my favorite guests, Michael Yan, who is an international war correspondent. And he, he's been here in studio several times and he's just made a trip to uh, the Netherlands. And he's, uh, he's been talking to a lot of farmers there about the government attempted takeover of the farms. They're trying to shut down food production uh, across many European countries, by the way. Uh, not just in Holland, but the, the Dutch are very angry. There's just been a major election there. And Michael Jan, uh, of course, the the um, world traveler has been there on the ground talking directly with people. So, uh, Michael Jan, uh, thank you for joining me today. It's it's an honor to have you on again. Thanks. I'm over here at the airport in Amsterdam, Schiphol, actually, and preparing to go to Japan. And um I've uh, been over here in Netherlands. As you know, I left from uh, Texas and Florida and Panama. I've been researching the uh, migration issues and the food issues and that sort of thing um, for, for a great amount of time. You and I often talk about it. But now we just had the elections here and the provincial elections in Netherlands. And uh, uh, what what's of uh, significant interest here, as you may see on the international news now, the one uh, party in particular, the BBB party, which in Dutch means like Borden, uh, Borden, uh, uh, Bevaking. I don't, sorry, I don't speak Dutch, but it's similar to German. So that's why I can remember I speak Deutsch. And, um, and, uh, and it means basically the, the, the farmer citizens movement. So the farmer citizens movement is BBB, right? In Dutch, BBB. I call it the PPP, the Pied Piper party, because to me, it looks like it's a diversion actually, it looks like it's meant to to divide divide the farmers, which I think it has successfully done. And now again, now I see people that are that know a great deal about Netherlands that are completely behind the BBB, and they think this this is wonderful news. And you see it a lot of uh, again international news today that this is wonderful. I just don't think it is. Here's some of my reasons for that. One is I do study information war. I have work, written three books on information war. They're all in Japanese. They're not actually in English. But anyway, but the point is, is I study information war. And as soon as I see the sign for the BBB, I'm, I'm immediately taken aback. It's BB better. I mean, literally thousands of signs around Netherlands. I just drove about 800 miles around Netherlands. This little country I was crisscrossing all over the place, talking with dairy farmers and flower farmers and all kinds of pig farmers, Christmas tree, so many types of farmers. And and the BB better signs were everywhere. I was like, uh, how much more in your face can it get? Build back better. I mean, right from the beginning. <laughs> That's funny. You yeah. know, but and, and it's green and it's green. Right. Which is which is the signs of the people that want to destroy the farms. Right. OK. But so then on. as I look. What 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 are the implications of this that the BBB just swept this recent election? Uh, are are they supposed to be pro farmer? Are they going to fight against the government takeover of the farms? What what's their position? I think they're negotiating the surrender, but the farmers think that they're going to fight for them. Here's some more of my evidence. I mean, come on, the BBB sign, BB better. I mean, that's like coming up with a swastika on your forehead and. And, and saying you're going to run daycare for uh, Jewish children. I mean, build back better equals kill the farms. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's that simple. I mean, you can't even make up this stuff. And yet they got they just swept the field. Here's some more evidence The the other parties like the Forum for Democracy uh, and, and, and quite a few others. Uh, they were just shut out on most of the press. They weren't getting press. Meanwhile, BB better. <laughs> Build Back Better Party, the Pied Piper Party, the Trojan Horse is what it looks like to me, was getting massive amounts of press, very positive, effusively positive press well, from, the, from the Dutch media. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they're cut. So they're cutting out the other people like Forum for Democracy, the FVD. They cut them out. I spent a lot of time rolling around with these different people. They cut. They're just like not only. Actually, FVD continued to get press today, but it was all negative. It was all attack press. They're, so they're completely they're, they're, they're just attacking FVD and other parties. Right. They but 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 the leaders of FVD and the members of parliament, they can't get any press. If they do, it's like negative press. Right. right. So and and so that's a huge indicator. I mean, the signs are everywhere. Right. The, the build back better signs. With green emblem. I mean, come on. Okay. And, and then but, now, now the, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Well, 
real quick, by the way, just for those watching, I, I want to make sure people can reach you. Um, you're, you're on locals.com and here's the page, michaelyon.locals.com and yon is spelled Y-O-N, just, just want to let people know. And then you're also on Twitter at Michael underscore yon. So we're showing your Twitter page there just so people can reach you. Um, but the, let's talk about, in, unless you have more details on that, but the, the broader implications do, of this yeah. for Europe, you know, the food supply. Oh, let, let me mention a little bit more about BBB. Okay. Some more of my evidence of somebody who travels to country after country looking at this stuff, right? Um, it's, it, the more you do it, the easier it is to spot, you know, it, suddenly it doesn't take years anymore to study parties. You can do things in weeks that used to take months and years, right? There's other evidence of BBB right on its face. One is they're, they, they just came into being in 2019. They've got the Build Back Better signs all over Netherlands. They've clearly got a lot of money. They're getting all the press. They're being billed as the anti Markaruta, who's the prime minister of Netherlands, as, as that anti Markaruta party. Meanwhile, they're the party which actually could be the ones who facilitate. All, Mark Ruta is a WEF boy. He's a World Economic Forum boy. You can see Klaus Schwab, who's the chairman of World Economic Forum. He's like, where do you get such prime ministers as Mark Ruta? He actually is saying that. You can see him on video. He's like, it, and Klaus Schwab is going, Mark Ruta, such a prime minister. Just look it up online. You'll see it. Yeah. He praises him like he praises Trudeau. Actually, and you can see Mark Ruta holding hands with Trudeau, doing the huggy man, kissy stuff with Trudeau. I mean, they're buddies, right? And the and 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 Mark Ruta is also he's just a boy of WEF, the World Economic Forum. So all of a sudden, BBB, who's supposed to be against Mark Ruta, standing up to him, is getting all the press, which is clearly controlled by the World Economic Forum. This government in Netherlands is completely controlled by the World Economic Forum, which is co-sanguinated, again, as we've talked about before, with CCP. The Chinese Communist Party and the World Economic Forum, I used to look at them as as partners, they're clearly married, right? And at some point, they're going to get a divorce and they're going to fight each other, but not yet. Uh, and so right now, we see the, the the World Economic Forum and CCP, they want these farms, the farms where I'm at right now, right? They're all around me. They're trying to build something called Tri-State City. I just did an interview with the excellent Jordan Peterson, my second interview with him while I was in Netherlands. I was on with Ava Vlardingerbroek, if you can say that 10 times fast. She's got a long <laughs> name nobody can remember. And so, but, but Ava was out at the farmer protest as well. But, but both Ava and I both mentioned, as I've mentioned many times, and on with you, is Tri-State City. Tri-State City is this huge smart city being built here in Netherlands and Belgium and Germany. The reason it's called Tri-State is because it's this huge city. The map is already drawn. You can find it online. And it, it takes up parts of these three countries, thus Tri-State, right? It takes up most of Netherlands. And they need this farmland here to do it, right? They need this farmland to make this massive smart city. They call them smart cities because if you call it a concentration camp, you know, people probably wouldn't join up. But Two ports are inside of Tri-State City. One is Rotterdam. Rotterdam is the biggest port in Europe. And then the second biggest port, Antwerp, which is not far from Rotterdam, the two biggest ports in Europe are at the terminus of Tri-State City. And where does it start? There's a railhead that starts all the way out in Chengdu, Shanghai, and these other feeders in China, goes all the way across Asia, right past me right here, and goes right out to Rotterdam, right? And so you need all these farms and you need uh, and, and there's other reasons to take the farmland, of course, to control the food, food security, food supply, and also to destroy the Dutch culture. For instance, members of the Dutch government are no longer allowed to call this Holland. Now, I get it for those experts on Holland because they're going to jump out as they always do. They're like the experts on ham radio that have to say, oh, that's illegal or something. There's always the experts on Holland go, no, it's just a couple uh, provinces that are Holland. We all get it. OK, hold it. Right. The bottom line is the Dutch government is not allowed to call this Holland anymore. And we get it. We know what the comments are going to be because I, 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 this happens every time. But that's a big deal because what they're trying to do is rip people from their culture, from 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 their base. So there's massive amounts of immigration coming in. Not far from me now. I'm at the hotel at the airport at Schiphol Airport. Ten minutes walk from me inside the airport is an OIM office right as you walk in the door. What is OIM? OIM is the Office of Immigration and Migration. 
or in different languages, it's IOM, depends on which language you're talking, but it's the same thing. It's a U United Nations. These are the ones I see down in Darien Gap in Panama. I see them in Colombia. I see them in Lithuania. I see them all over the place. This, these are the pumps that pump the migrants, invaders, into places like Ireland, into places like today's St. Patrick's Day. I'm sure the Irish Replacement Army is in the mosques around Dublin. I was in Dublin last year. The streets are filled with migrants. Same with Luxembourg. It's about 50% now in Luxembourg. All over Europe is like that. Same here. So they've been telling, the government here has been starting to, to prepare the Dutch people that they may have to take people into their homes. Now, if you bring this up to Dutch people, they'll go, what? No, they're not really going to do that. Yeah, they mentioned it. Not a big deal. Okay, you know what else they mentioned in recent times was laws to save and protect wolves. Well, why would you have laws to save and protect wolves when there was no wolves in Netherlands? There were no wolves at that time. Now, about two weeks ago, after I got here, a wolf was killed right next to my hotel, about 500 meters away on the highway. Somebody has brought wolves in here. But before the wolves are here, they passed a law to protect the wolves. Now you got these wolves, you know, killing people's livestock. And the wolves are on the World Economic Forum website, by the way. You know, wolves and bears and how this will all be pristine nature. Now, what you know, one lady in Germany about two weeks ago, you can see it in the news, she was getting chased by three wolves. And luckily, her electric bike, she hit the button on – she said she had a turbo button or something, and she said she could hear the wolves. They were – they almost got her, three wolves, right? And, the, and you know, Ursula uh, uh, van der Leiden over in Germany, the, you know, the people call her the witch of Germany – uh, some wolves killed one of her ponies, her favorite pony, some months ago, and they got DNA from the pony, and now they've been hunting that wolf. I don't know if they've killed it yet, but she's one of the ones who's pushing the wolves until it got her pony, right? So, I mean, the wolf – now, if you talk with the Dutch farmers, they'll tell you the wolves are about getting them off of their farms. First, it's killing their livestock. The, the wolves are killing their livestock, and one Dutch farmer – his name is Jordan. He told me – he said the wolves here are more protected than the than the damn queen. That's how he put it, actually. Yeah, well, goes, you, well I, go ahead, Michael. Go I, ahead. So many issues here, but I, I would say that, you know yeah. the government uh, leaders are the wolves, and they're preying on 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 the yeah. farmers and and the people. Uh, but you bring up so many issues here. So in the big big picture, you're talking about a massive land grab that's happening to grab yeah. the farms under the cover of climate change or protecting the wolves, as you just said, and this is actually mm -hmm. preparing for the, uh, shall we say, the, the de-whitification of Europe? I mean, is that, is that even a term? I mean, they're, they're eliminating the Europeans from Europe. They're replacing them. This is a replacement program uh, for, in the long run, to have you know, no more Brits in Britain, right? No more French in France. It, it's all going to be an invasion and a takeover by these migrants from you know, the Middle East, largely, and Africa and, and Asia, these regions completely taking over and then these World Economic Forum globalist run cities, probably with the communist Chinese running the Belt and Road Initiative right into uh, Antwerp right there. Uh, is, that, is that sound about right uh, for their long term plans? It's like obviously right. It's like it's like is, is the sky above our heads. I mean, it's like so obvious. They, I just got a PCR test. It wasted a day of my time, right? Because I got I'm going to Japan to talk with farmers and fishers and whatnot. The lady who took the test is from mainland China. I spoke with her. It's ten minutes from me. I, I walked to I got at the airport. Two of the doctors on the test are from they're Chinese, right? So yeah. I mean, this is so the COVID uh, the let's say the Wuhan virus. You know, now I'm getting tested by Chinese here in Netherlands, right? When and I'm at the terminus of of, of the railhead from China. This right. is part of the Belt and Road Initiative, right? Now, they're very clear. There's a reason I spend so much time in Panama, Netherlands, Tibet. You know, uh, it's been years since I've been to Tibet, but look how they do this. China, in particular, uses weaponized migration. Drip, 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 bringing in the, the new migrants. Uh, they've done the same in Tibet. Uh, genocide in Tibet. I've been to Tibet. They've done the same with, or doing the same with the Uyghurs. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, this is how they roll, right? And so it's not long before something happens with Taiwan. I don't know what that'll be. I talked with a PLA officer at one point. I mean, a Chinese military officer. I mean, a, an enemy officer. And he was very, this was years ago. This would be about maybe 2016. He told me uh, that they're just going to slowly take uh, Taiwan. They hopefully won't do any shooting or anything like that. They'll just slowly 
basically just grow around them the way a tree grows around a fence post, you know, just like slowly taking it. And and so that's how they roll. Information war is, of course, the highest form of warfare. You know about this. You've talked about it many times. And I know the people that watch your show are, all, are, are also are paying attention to information war. So they prep the battlefield. Ireland, as an example, I was there last year. And uh, you see Mary Lou McDonald, the leader, leader of Sinn Féin. I was out with her. Many people think Mary Lou McDonald will end up being the prime minister of, uh, of a new Ireland at some point. But all she wanted to talk about, I was with her, all she wanted to do is talk about equity and equality and all this nonsense. And I wanted to talk about food, fuel, you know, energy, security. I wanted to talk about uh, things like that that keep the lights on. And she's like, well, you know, let's talk about equity policy and blah, 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 blah. You know, it's, she's a total Marxist. And, you know, and, the, and and many of the Irish just worship her. You know, there's a wall in Belfast. I was up in Belfast last year in Dublin and other places. There's a wall more than 20 miles long. It's a giant wall. It's a, I would say it's taller than the Trump wall in, in Me- you know, on the Mexican-U.S. border, which I've been, you know, months, months and months down on that wall. And, and it, I would say it's bigger than that and yeah. uh, actually considerably bigger. And it's to keep the, the Protestants and the, and the Catholics apart. And they still got that wall. They still close those – Think about this for a minute. They still have a giant wall between Protestants and Catholics in Ireland, and they're bringing in huge amounts of Muslims. <laughs> you just can't make up this stuff. Well, you well, know what I mean, Michael. It the the picture that you're painting for us, and and I think you're you're the person who's on the ground the most, talking to real people every day, and you understand, you know, food, fertilizer, agriculture, industry. Uh, uh, Nord Stream and all of that. The, the picture that you've been painting for us in our multiple conversations over the last several months is one of Western Europe ending. Uh, Western Europe essentially collapsing. I mean, we have right now Credit Suisse is in real financial trouble. It's on the verge of collapse. I've been told that it has already internally collapsed and without a bailout, it's done. Uh, we've got the Euro that's going to be uh, in real trouble here shortly because of the industrial collapse of Germany, because of the Nord Stream pipeline destruction by the United States, uh, electricity prices through the roof, deindustrialization of Europe, uh, massive job loss, uh, increasing famine and scarcity, people skipping meals in the United Kingdom uh, because of food prices, the, the collapse of small businesses, the uh, unrented commercial office space all over London and Paris and other European cities. I mean, we could go on and on, but... It looks to me like Western Europe does not survive this. And then plus the weaponized migration that you were just talking about. Give us, I mean, is is that an accurate big picture? Because it's like the globalists are actually at war with Western Europe. And frankly, the U.S., uh, the Biden administration seems to be helping the globalists destroy Western Europe. What's your take on that? Again, it's like super obvious. You know, it's like it's right in your face. Uh, that, uh, for instance, um, Let's talk about Netherlands, okay? In in Netherlands, the people that are coming to Netherlands are from at least 140 countries, right? And they're divided. Like, and I've spent. Keep in mind, uh, for those who don't know me, I've spent. More, I'm American. I grew up in Florida. Was in the U.S. Army and that sort of thing. Then I went to school and I lived overseas for many years. I've spent more than half of my life uh, overseas in about 90 countries, right? I've lived most of my life in other countries, right? Whether, whether that's Europe for six years, uh, Asia for getting on 20 or so middle East, five or six, you know, just all over the place. Right. And so I, I've, I've really had a, a look at the, at the aquarium here and uh, most of the countries out there, for instance, Kuwait, Kuwait right now has, has huge, you know, this is a rich, rich country. And yet their streets are filled with potholes, <laughs> main, main highways filled with potholes, right? Amazing. They can't run the country. They can't run the country despite sitting atop, you know, just massive wealth. I mean, they don't want to work. They don't have school teachers that can teach the Kuwaiti children yet. They don't want foreign teachers. They're going to get gobbled up. It's going to be sayonara Kuwait at some point because they they're not as well educated as basically they're a dumb guy walking down the street with a bunch of diamonds in their pockets. Right. And they're small. And there's, you got Iraq, Saudi Arabia, which doesn't like them too much. And you got Iran right there. You know what I mean? Somebody's going to come and get you. And this time, Big Daddy, uh, you know, United States is probably not going to come and help. Or maybe we will. I don't know. You know how these things go. But the bottom line is. All around the world, I see countries like this, whether it's Nepal, where I spent a year, 
The people in Nepal or Afghanistan, they can't cooperate with each other to build even a tiny bridge, right? They, they like, like I've seen this bridge thing in so many countries, and so that's why it always comes to mind. For instance, you know, this village on this side of the river and that village on that side, they will not get together and build a simple bridge, which would help both of them. They just don't organize like that. So think about this, how this looks to me as somebody who spends his time in all these third world countries all over the place in developing countries, knowing they generally can't cooperate. And now you pull people in from about 140 plus of these countries. So you've got a literal tower of Babel here. They can't cooperate. But you want to get rid of the Dutch farmers and fishermen and and the the court. You can't even call yourself the country Holland anymore. You want to get rid of that core identity and get rid of us. I'm American, but get rid of us type of people around different countries. And Japan is on the menu, too. That's why I'm about to fly there. But the bottom line is, is you get you replace us the way Stalin did with the Kulaks and you replace them with basically uh, bumbling idiots. Right now, you can control those bumbling idiots. They can't cooperate with each other. And they, they they all speak different languages anyway, from different, even if they're Nigerian, let's say, they'll come from different people in Nigeria, like the Igbo people or whatever, Igbo people, right? I mean, there's different people, like these different uh, countries, let's say, uh, let's say the Kurds. It's not like the Kurds all cooperate with each other. They cooperate with their tribes, and then they have fights within their tribes, right? No, but- Kurds fight Kurds quite a lot. Kurds well- fight Arabs, Kurds fight Turks. It's easy to separate these people and control them. We have... Though, Michael, I mean, I mean, I'm glad you brought up the issue of bumbling idiots, but what we have in Europe now are woke idiots. So to downgrade oh, yeah. below bumbling idiots is woke idiots, where at least bumbling idiots don't think that men can have babies, right? Like uh, at least woke idiots. I mean, you, you go to uh, uh, Turkey uh, or uh, Middle Eastern countries, even uh, I'm, I'm not calling Turkish people idiots, by the way, I'm, I'm saying that even in Middle Eastern countries, if you take the, the lowest IQ people in those countries, because uh, there are low IQ people everywhere, especially in American cities, by the way. But if you take mm. the lowest IQ people in a place like Turkey, they do not mutilate their children's genitalia. OK, they're not that crazy. But in woke European countries, they mutilate their children and then they pretend like they're superior to the Turkish people or superior to Iranian people. And they are not, by the way. Uh, The Iranian people are actually quite intellectually brilliant, capable people. They are. I always uh, get along with Persians, by the way. Persians, Iranians, it'll start that fight. Yes, Yes, exactly. I I always get along with it. uh, I always get along with Iranians. I get along. I I don't even know why we're at war. Every time I'm with Iranians, I'm like, why are we at war with these people? I know. know, I know. It doesn't make any sense. I've been been chatting with two of my Afghan friends off and on for the last couple of days. One's in Ukraine now. I'm like, what are you doing? You're in Ukraine, man. You came for, I met him in one war. Now he's off in another one. I "I like the guy. I actually, I get along very well with Afghans, but they can't cooperate cooperate with each other to get things done. And they can be very smart, but they, but uh, on the, on, on the uh, societal level, like with Nepal, I love Nepalese people. I spent a year there. You're right. I was all over Nepal. I was, you know, just you wouldn't believe it for a year, you know, because I was in so many villages and I get along with them very well, but they will not cooperate with each other. Filipinos have a problem with, I love Filipinos. I get along with them. Great. You know, but, but they won't cooperate to build up Philippines into what it actually could be. Right. Singapore, on the other hand, you know what I mean? They can take, you can take Singaporeans and put them on, in, uh, you know, Philippines and they would, or Japanese, and they would make something out of that lickety split, right? Because they can cooperate, right? And that's one of the, well, there's other qualities as well, but that's what I'm getting to. So if you're going to just, if you're going to take control, you create a tower of Babel from cultures that can't cooperate with each other very well. And then you add them with all the other cultures, right? That it's a complete control mechanism. Right. And they have no ideas about what freedom they don't, all they care about is if they get basically get, Paid and 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 you know and 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 they'll be dis- they'll be and, and keep in mind the World Economic Forum has been crystal clear that they wish to reduce the world population, and China Chinese Communist Party they have been crystal clear that they wish to replace the world with Chinese genetics. They do. That's why you see that Chi Nazi thing on the top of my Twitter screen the, of the Chinese Communist Party are incredibly racist. They are literally up there with Hitler. No exaggeration. And 
and they are on it. So they wish to reduce the world population too. They're doing it to the Uyghurs. They've been, when I was up in Tibet, I mean, Tibetans are not going to get Tibet back and that game is over unless, you know, you know, aliens come and wipe out the Han Chinese or something. I mean, it's, it's just gone. And, and so, and again, these are genocides, which they do big ones and small ones that you never see. They'll do it to uh, Taiwan in a, in a New York minute. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and there, and so think about it from, so you got WEF and CCP both want to get rid of people like us because we're an obstacle for them right now. But at some point, remember, most of the WEF people are white folks, right? You know what I mean? And at some point, big old CCP and WEF, they're going to go at it because it's going to be a divorce. Once they've, if they succeed on reducing uh, these, you know, there's no borders here, essentially. We have no borders in Texas. You know, that's why I wear these beautiful ponchos, you know, because <laughs> I'm always down in the border areas and that sort of thing at Mexico or whatever. And, and and we don't have a border in Texas. It's it's really gone. You you live in Texas. And, and, and it's the same with Netherlands. I mean, again, just right ne- next to where I got this ridiculous PCR test for the Chinese virus, uh, there is an OIM office, ticket office, to give these migrants tickets and airplane. Uh, they, they fly them all over the world and all over uh, Europe. So once you get here to Amsterdam, they're flying people to different parts of Europe or out of the Europe, right? They literally fly and land right here at Amsterdam Airport at Schiphol. Yeah, well, I they, mean, they this do is the much sa- the same the- thing in the U.S. They'll, they'll bring in loads and loads of migrants and, and put them on buses uh, the, the Biden administration did this and then deposit them in cities where they need more Democrat voters in order to rig elections. It. But uh, they do it day and night. Something really critical about what you just said, though, you know, China is temporarily cooperating with the WEF to bring down the population of Western, quote, white uh, civilization nations. But China is doing it through energy policy. Right. So China doesn't have to abide by any kind of climate restrictions whatsoever. But Western nations are collapsing their economies because uh, because of climate change, essentially, you know, shutting down uh, any kind of fossil fuel production, natural gas, uh, new oil exploration and so on, and even blowing up each other's pipelines, as the U.S. did uh, with with Nord Stream. But then, as you say, eventually China is going to say, well, now that the West is sufficiently weakened or even destroyed, then China will move against the West. You think that day is coming? Oh, clearly. I mean, they're moving against us right now. I think they'll move against the people that are cooperating with them now because they they have mutual interest, just like we started using Al Qaeda, of all people, to help go against ISIS. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, you know, these war makes strange bedfellows and eventually they fight each other. Right. And yeah, it, 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 it's really a very serious situation. And um talking about climate change and all these r- ridiculous things, I call them ridiculous because for those people who have been to places like India or China, you wouldn't believe how bad the air is in China. You practically need a machete to cut through that air in Beijing at times. I mean, when I've landed in Beijing, I've been all over China. When you when you land in Beijing, at some points I'm like, are, are, are our wings from this airplane going to get stuck in these clouds? They look like amber. We're going right. to be stuck here. We're going to be we're going to be preserved. You know, everybody in this. I mean, it's so thick, you wouldn't believe it. Seriously. I mean, you're coming down into it. You're just like, I can't believe this. This happens over and over when I go to China, right? Different places, Nanjing or Shanghai. Shanghai is relatively clean compared. For those who have been to Shanghai and you're like talking about how bad and dirty the air is, shoot on over to Beijing. You know, some of the other places <laughs> right. like that are Shenzhen. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, and, 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 and so meanwhile, we're abiding and, and every year, you know, uh, the, the burning season throughout Asia. For those who've been to Asia during burning season, yeah. I have literally been in places like Cambodia and uh, Myanmar, you know, Burma, Thailand. Uh, I remember uh, one time I was on the Mekong River in Lao between Thailand and Lao, and my, the, 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 the smoke was so thick, I literally could barely see the end of my hand. I was like, this is unbelievable. If I, I I took a note because I, I'm I'm like in the future I'm not even going to believe myself you know what I mean uh-huh. that it was that that it was that thick I mean that's the type of thickness that just causes people to fall over and die on the spot which they're probably doing out there but well, I mean you know birds you know killing the birds and you, everything else it's unbelievable I would say you know yeah so the the air is pristine in Beijing uh, the traffic is good in Manila 
and the banks are solvent in America. So there, there you go. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's all you need to know, folks. If you're a world traveler, everything's fine. Um, but bring this together in, in the big picture here, here, Michael, because you, more than anyone I know, you see firsthand what's happening in all these countries. You see the big moves on the chessboard of, of planet Earth. And I think you also see that our current systems are not uh, sustainable. Like the, the, the world we grew up in is ending. What's that ending going to look like in, in your view? I mean, I don't mean the end of the world, but the end of, let's say, the, the West. What does that look like? Yeah, it's clearly not the end of the world. This thing's going to keep on spinning unless we get hit with some right. thing. You know what I mean? But 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 uh, the sun will still keep rising and that sort of thing, and the tides will come and go. But uh, but certainly the human world is going to take some dramatic changes. It, it is right now. I mean, you've been talking about it for years. I mean, uh, you know how serious this can get. We know that we're going to have to. I mean, your whole you got a huge warehouse there that sells incredible food, which I got. I bought a bunch of it. I mean, you I mean, you know how serious this is going to get. And I would highly recommend people have at least a couple of years of food. There are people like that's ridiculous. It's too much. No, it's not. It's not expensive. And the thing is, is it's not ultimately you need to be able to create your own food. But as a stopgap to be able to get from here to there and so that you're not in a rush and panicked and and worried about things, you should definitely be able to tide yourself over with energy and food and those sorts of, the, you know, clean water. As Matt Bracken always says, everybody needs to know exactly where their water comes from. Yep. My water filter is around, around here somewhere. I always carry my catadine water filter. I've had the same water filter for over 20 years of taking it to wars and everything else. I like but that. I, That's but, my favorite <laughs> brand of uh, portable water it? filters. Yeah, for camping. I mean, yeah. there aren't, aren't they made there in, in Europe? In Switzerland. In Switzerland. I, I think they're made in, there's a Swiss company, but actually I, I don't, I, I'm not affiliated with Catadine, by the way. Yeah. But people no, often ask me what water filters I use and a lot of our special forces guys use it. And that's what I use. Well, and I, I, I use the them same, because they're made out of yeah. like uh, machine stainless steel, very heavy duty, rugged components. They're, they're very expensive and they absolutely work. Yeah. They're expensive. Yeah. Get them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I have the water. same thing. No, I own because, like five <laughs> Catadine filters myself because I, I want something that's going to work. I don't want like a cheap plastic China made uh, pump filter that's that's the, the O-ring seals are going to break after 50 pumps. You know, if you see any gear that is with me, it's the high quality stuff because yes. I'm too poor to buy cheap. I'm way too poor to buy cheap stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I get the right, get the right stuff. I mean, you know, people are like, oh, I got to save a little money and get a cheaper water filter. I'm like, you are out of your mind. You get the best ax that you can get. You get the best water filter. Yep. You get the best camera. My great camera's right here. Sorry for that language, but that's the way I talk sometimes. I mean, everything I got, my flashlights and everything, yep. I would show you right here. They're right on. Anyway, get the best because like, you know, when you need a water filter, like when I'm in a place like India or Nepal or Bangladesh, whatever, you know, that water is kind of important. There's a lot of cholera out there and cholera will wipe you out. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And, and all kinds of other baddies out there as well. So well, when you, uh, you know, when you get back to Texas, I have something that's being made for you right now. And it's, um, it's a, a new line of knives that I've actually co-designed with Dawson knives and we're saving one for mm -hmm. you. And uh, so, ne I mean, next time you're here, come just swing on by and you can get it. And uh, we've, we've also got some, some iodine and some supplements that uh, I'm setting aside for you as well. But we have a new knife design that you're going to love. And I call the knife, it, it's about urban escape, okay? The name of the knife, and this is the first time I've mentioned it publicly, but the name of the knife is Escape from New York. Like that's the, <laughs> that, that's the knife. But um, I want to make sure you get one of these. You probably can't take it to Europe, but you can keep it in Texas and, and you'll really enjoy it fine quality gear. Yeah. Yeah. Here, you know, the people that like, you know, file off the end of the knives or whatever, you know, it's like, they're such slaves here. I mean, I, I love Europe in, in a lot of ways. I spent more than six years here, but the knife thing is a big deal. I mean, you could yeah. be thrown in jail here, like as if you're walking around with a machine gun or something. You know what no, I mean? it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, you're, you're never allowed to defend yourself in a European city or, or a country, even as you're being invaded. And some of the migrants are like raping the European daughters, you know, uh, I mean, again and again, and it's all in the news and, and you're, you're never allowed to defend your families against the in, in Or leaders. say that. 
or huh? say what you just said or even say what you just said. Oh, yeah. You, you know can't even mean? say it but in yeah, Europe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can't even say the truth or in the United States. But, you know, a lot of us are just tired of that. I'm sick of it. I'm saying it all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, 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 I have lived again more than half of my life overseas in these countries. And I know one thing. Some fish just don't mix well in the same aquarium. Bottom line. You know, they mix some fish together like Turks and Kurds. They're going to go at it. You know what I mean? Kurds and Arabs. They're going to go at it. Turks and Arabs. They're going to go at it. You know, it's, it's like, you know, it's like it, it, there's, you know, people, there's uh, Chechens and anybody. They're going to go at it. Right. Right. It's just the way it goes. Well, I'm, I'm sad to say, but your overall view today is one of uh, infinite tribalism that instead of planet Earth, it should be called planet tribes or something, because it's like the the human race will never be able to cooperate to a level that that achieves the the true potential of what we're capable of. Sadly, it seems that way. And, you know, the, our enemies that are trying to divide and conquer us, they realize this again. Why would you start pushing people from all these different ethnicities and and religions and whatnot into Ireland as just an example when the Protestants and the Catholics there are still, I mean, it's just a matter of time until they explode again, right? <laughs> Unless you just want to, you know, cause more trouble, which is clearly what's going to happen. You know, but again, most of these people that are coming in, with very few exceptions, have no concept of freedom. Most Europeans have no concept of freedom. Again, Ich spreche Deutsch. I've been all over this place. I've lived in Poland for two years. I lived in Germany for four years, and I've been all over Europe traveled with Europeans a lot in Asia and often the wars and that sort of thing. And they just don't have the same sense of freedom that a lot of Americans have. And I will delineate between Americans and U.S. citizens. I know it upsets people sometimes, but it's just the truth. And let's just and just so just swallow it, swallow it down that the Americans are the are those core people who believe in real, actual freedom, freedom of speech, Second Amendment, and just keep right on going believe in actual actually believe that the constitution is important to abide by we actually believe in america and then there's u.s citizens that are just people with the paper that says yeah i got a passport i'm a u.s citizen right whatever you know you know and then there's there's a lot of americans i would call them americans who've never been to america and they're never going to be a u.s citizen but they're the same as we are insofar as they believe in freedom you know, when I say the same as we are, they don't have to be the same religion or anything like that. They just have to leave us alone. Right. And we leave them alone and we cooperate and work together and, you know, and, 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 and do things together, uh, build bridges together, do business together, travel together, get to know each other, sing songs together, whatever, get yeah. married. It doesn't matter. But we believe in freedom. We believe in and 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 that we that you know we are at one with our own God, right? And and we don't have to do what we're told to do by some nebulous government. Yeah, and I want to be clear um, be, as we're wrapping this up. You know, Michael, both you and I, we get along with people of every race, every color, every religion, every gender, every sexual orientation, even. And you know. I call myself accurately uh, Afro-Irish Native American because I have, you know, my ancestors are from Africa and Ireland and, you know, Native American as well. So uh, that's, that's an accurate statement. And we don't judge people by the color of their skin. We want people to get along. You know, as much as we're talking here about the invasion of Europe, you know, we're not opposed to people of any ethnicity or color. We just, we believe that nations should have the right to defend their borders, defend their language and their culture, and to exist as their own sovereign nations. It's that simple. Yeah. Rights are something you take, you know, uh, and, and freedoms are something you take. If you're asking for freedoms, like, you know, you'll hear Europeans and a lot of Americans will say, well, they should allow us to do such and such. I'm like, I don't care about what they allow us to do. We should just take it. You know what I mean? I mean, rights are things that you take and defend. It's not something that's granted. Right. Like, you know, well, the, the government is going to let us go without math, you know, <laughs> you know, bull PCR test. I'll get my revenge. You know, sometimes you have to do you have to do the things and whatnot, but it's not going to go unanswered. All these things come with a price for them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like and everybody needs to do something every day to fight back. Do something, at least one thing every day to fight back. Nobody needs to know about it. Or maybe part of your fighting back is to let people know about it. But just do something every day that throws a little 
a little bit of sand or a little bit of pebble in the shoe of the beast. But keep Blow it that obviously beast a, down. Uh, keep it nonviolent. I I know you. I know yeah, that's what you mean. But I just want to clarify. Yeah, not, you're not calling for violence. Um, no, no, not at all. Not right. not at all. But nonviolent not resistance and, against uh, and tyranny within, and within the law and within the, within law. the law. But exactly it, and within the law. But and and but resist right. And and so I mean, if if not, you're just a slave. Who doesn't yeah. resist? Well, and right uh, now, just speaking slave, the truth right? is an act of resistance against tyranny. Just just telling the truth, like that that PCR test you're holding up there. You and I both know that's scientific fraud. That there's no validity to a PCR test, but they make you go through the hoops to to teach you that you're a slave. You have to be obedient to them to enter their country, and that's Japan making you do that right now, right? Yeah, it's Japan. And, and whoever else is, you know, in the United States won't let these people, Dutch people or Japanese fly to. There's a lot of Dutch and Japanese I know. Keep in mind, most of the time, I'm the Zeno. Most of the time, I'm I'm the foreigner. Most of right. the time, I'm out, out in places like Asia. I love Asia, man. I, 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 you know, I've got an office in Thailand, you know. And so, I mean, it's, it's like I've been all over you know, India, Asia. So, so, but but the point is, is the United States is also doing that. We are forcing people to get the jab to come to the United States. So you got a lot of people that want to come to the United States. They want to go on vacation or visit family or just, you know, I don't know, go see Disney or something. I don't know why would they want to go see Disney anymore, anymore, but, but they can't come without the jab. Right. I mean, which is, you know, that's, that's criminal. That's straight up criminal. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Okay. Uh, th another fascinating conversation, Michael, let me give out your websites again. Um, you're on locals.com, Michael Yan dot locals.com. And again, Y O N is the correct spelling. There it is. Y O N uh, of your last name. And then you're also on Twitter, uh, Michael underscore Jan on Twitter. Um, that's great that they let you on Twitter. Um, they won't let me uh, speak on Twitter, e even under Elon Musk, <laughs> not, not allowed to tweet. So oh, what I've never heard you say anything radical. Not that I follow everything that you say, but is there anything that stands out in your mind? You know, <laughs> no, uh, no, that's the, no, that's the say. thing. I, I, I've just taught people how to not need big pharma. That's what it was. I, I cut into their, yeah. their revenue model for the pharmaceutical giants. And that that's why they deplatform me everywhere. It was all about like, I'm far more radical than you are. And somehow I'm still on. I was actually getting self-conscious about it for a while. I'm like, you know, I need to get blocked or I'm going to look like I'm an insider from the beast. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, may maybe you can contact Elon and say, please ban me for at least a month so I get some credibility here. Jeez. Can you the ban me so I can? Yeah. OK, so um, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll wrap this up for today. But, Michael, um, let me know when you get back in Texas and uh, you want to come back in studio. Maybe we'll have uh, that knife ready for you at that time. It's in production, too. But let's um, do it. Yeah. I, you know, be safe on your journeys. You're doing amazing work out there. Thank you for keeping us informed here on brighttown.com and all, all the, the listeners and readers that love your work and love what you do. And we appreciate your time. Thanks for having me on. And by the way, did you see the, the Dutch farmers that watch your work? They'll be seeing this. Hello. I, I did. Oh, I saw I've the, my... in fact, I was going to play that video yeah. in one of my podcasts, but yeah, that one Dutch farmer was saying hi to me. Uh, uh, that he's a listener. I, that was awesome. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, uh, more than, it wasn't just him. It's on different days. People will come up. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, I'll let you go. No, I only saw the the one. So I'll have to go back and see. But I saw the one guy, kind of a uh, real thin, fit looking, tall guy. Uh, yeah. Who was saying hi? They're all tall, man. They're like giants here. Well, you yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess they're all tall. They're all pretty fit too. Uh, <laughs> they but, are. Anyway. <laughs> All right, Michael, thanks for joining me today. It's always a pleasure and, and be safe and, and let's reconnect when you're back in Texas. Thanks, Mike. I'll see you later. Okay. All right. Take care then. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. Uh, Mike Adams here on brighton.com. Of course, as always, you can repost this video on other platforms. Uh, thank you for watching today and thank you for your support. Today's interview is brought to you by the survival food products we have at healthrangerstore.com. We've got ranger buckets here. These two buckets go together. There's an A and a B bucket that go together. And it's a very large supply, all certified organic, all lab tested. We've got milk powder here, which is also certified organic, lab tested for salmonella, E. coli, heavy metals, glyphosate, other things. And we're adding dioxin testing soon. We've also got number 10 cans of many different fruits and vegetables. Most of them are freeze dried. This happens to be clean chlorella which is very rich in chlorophyll. And uh, this is all available at healthrangerstore.com. And I want you to understand that inside these buckets here 
are these food bricks. This happens to be red lentil bricks, but this shows you the kind of vacuum packing. I mean, these are rigid. You know, they're actually rigid bricks. Uh-oh, here comes Rody. No, 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 don't. Not today. Not today, Rody. Uh, he tore one of these up. Hey, not, this is not your toy. This is not your toy. Um, these are really rigid, commercially vacuumed food. Yeah, good boy. You're good. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Good boy. All right. So uh, that's what we have. Food supplies available now at healthrangerstore.com. And uh, remember that these pails and these cans, these are rodent proof, but they're not roadie proof. If he gets a hold of it, uh, he will he will tear it up for sure. Uh, that's what we have available there, folks. Healthrangerstore.com. Thank you for your support. A global reset is coming. And that's why I've recorded a new nine-hour audiobook. It's called The Global Reset Survival Guide. You can download it for free by subscribing to the naturalnews.com email newsletter, which is also free. I'll describe how the monetary system fails. I also cover emergency medicine and first aid and what to buy to help you avoid infections. So download this guide. It's free. It's my gift to you simply because I want like-minded people to survive.